So it's my pleasure to introduce three sophomores. Kamal Rivki, Istan Slamet, and Clarissa Kamal. So they launched 360 Energy in Indonesia this past summer with the support of our IE Tinkerbox program. Kamal and Istan, who are CEO and CTO, are WPI. Are from WPI and Clarissa, who is the Chief Business Development Officer from Clark University. As you will see, they are changing lives in Indonesia by solving a very important problem of limited access to the electric grid in rural communities that make it very difficult for locals to make a living. So, with that, let's give it up for. Thank you, Chris. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like you to imagine a large but peaceful farm sitting behind a natural, beautiful landscape of clear blue skies and luscious trees. Now I'd like to introduce you to our friend, Mr. Smart. Mr. Smart is a fish farmer in West Java, Indonesia. So I'd like you to imagine that you are Mr. Smart. See, with rising inflation and little access to proper electricity, it's become very difficult for farmers like you to compete with industrial farms. See, without the technological advantages that make industrial aquaculture so efficient, it's become very difficult for traditional farmers to compete. Almost impossible. But imagine if traditional farmers like you did have access to these advantages and the electricity you need to compete. So that's why our goal became to provide accessible renewable energy for rural communities in Indonesia. Well, what does accessible renewable energy mean for us? That will be answered by a CTO next time. So our solution to that problem is the hydroelectric microgrid. And as you can see, microgrid is composed of two main components. The first being power generation. You can see that in the gravitational water vortex power plant, which we like to call GOO for short. And basically that provides 4.5 kilowatts of power and can be very easily implemented in farms across the Indonesia. And the power stack is our energy storage component of the microgrid, and that can be also used for other renewable energy projects. And those two main components come together to power Mr. Sumar's mobile, but more importantly, the fish farm aerator. And this fish farm aerator is sort of like a water wheel, and it's, when it's turned on, it spins and oxygenates the water for the fish farm. More oxygen in the water means the fish grow faster and thus rise in profits. <laughs> As for our design innovations, um, we really focus on sustainability and scalability. So, as you can see in our turbine, it's a very, very simple design, but it's actually very intentional. Uh, we made it this way so that local workshops in Indonesia can produce and replicate these turbines very easily. Uh, without the need for like extreme precision or anything like that. And as for the basin, uh, we chose this conical shape to eliminate the need for a dam or a pen stock. And this shape actually increases the water flow, reducing the loss of energy and increases its efficiency. Laws of mind, we first had to prove that our solution was technically feasible. With mentorship, and financial support from the WPI Tinkerbox, we were not only able to build a microgrid for Mr. Samarna, but we also established a strong local supply network through an MOU with Mr. Samarna's uh, farmers union in cooperation with local construction unions and training local fabrication workshops to manufacture and um, repair our turbines. So all this has up to a simple yet meaningful conclusion. The microgrid empowers Samarna to better provide for his family. The growth potential, however, does not end here, as Clarissa, our chief of business development, will prove. So like, this, like Kamala said, our technology goes beyond Mr. Samarna. We are helping communities be power and have power. Overall, we are reducing 28 metric tons of CO2 in so that the children of Indonesia can live a better and cleaner life. So, let me take a moment to discuss the scalability of our microgrid throughout Indonesia. So, as you can see from this table here, we compared our system with our competitor Turkey in Europe, specifically Belgium. Um, I won't 
want you to really take away I want you guys to have is that our system is able to be manufactured where it's going to be implemented. Um, that way, since we work so closely with our communities and our clients, our systems can be better tailored to their needs. On top of this, this uh, has a lower repair cost compared to turbines. And as an added bonus, our, our uh, system is much more cost efficient uh, with less uh, affordability, more affordability uh, per watt. And as for our serviceable obtainable market, uh, based on census data, we found that there's a potential of 313 microgrid installations in Lanka Panchar district. So based on our revenue calculations, after five years, we could generate $4.4 million from a single district. To put that into perspective, there are 10 districts in one city and 620 districts in the entire province. Our primary objective is scaling. To implement and operate effectively, we are asking for mentorship, specifically guidance for in supply chain optimization and, and ideally energy industry connections. Additionally, we look for 27,000 to deploy four microgrids, creating real meaningful change for the community and the environment. Overall, these are our recent recognitions. We are very proud of being part of the Climate Innovation League competition, which is sponsored by the EU and in collaboration with the Indonesian University. Right now, we are a top three finalist. Along with that, we are part of the MIT Standing Rock Program, which is an MIT program to pursue a entrepreneurial journey and to compete for funding. And lastly, most recently, actually yesterday, we finished the Indonesia's Prime Minister of Technology, Education, and Culture, and Research, and it talks about collaborating. Overall, none of this would be possible without our strategic partners and our media partners. Along with our wonderful advisors that have been able to help us along the way, and our team that has been putting their heart and soul in making 360 possible. And so, we hope you can continue your support, whether through funding or even an Instagram follow, to help us make a greener village so that we can all live in a greener world. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So you, you targeted fish farms, small ones. Yeah, uh, traditional fish, not necessarily, not necessarily small. Okay. Those are not using aquaculture or don't have access to the technology because of their proximity to uh, urban areas where just the, uh, you know, there's no coverage, right? Do you see other applications, other industries or agriculture or Yes, uh, definitely our focus is uh, agriculture, especially when agriculture needs power, which is everywhere, right? As um, as there's a transition to, uh, as, you know, the battery-powered vehicles, for example, um, you could have battery-powered agricultural vehicles. And this could be a very viable method to charge them, right? Because then you don't necessarily need to rely on a power plant um, being located close to the city or something. You could have these um, installed in large farms and multiple, like you could have it installed every 100 meters or something like that in the irrigation pads, assuming there's enough flow. Okay. Yes. yes. Can you touch, uh, since I know you touched on it briefly, it's kind of like, but can you talk a little bit more about how you're reaching out to the farmers and engaging with them? Because it doesn't strike me that rural farmers are exactly easy to. Okay, so, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, for example, which is smartest fish farm, uh, farmers union, is in connection to unions in the area, right? They're part of the a larger umbrella of our unions. And so, the idea is if we are able to help one union, that will set an example for other unions to join our network, right? So, it's about creating a community, basically. Does that answer your question? I had a question of you seem really far advanced in your design and implementation as sophomore year. What led you to this this idea and when did you start working on this? So Okay, so um, I guess the question is what gave you an idea for it and um, when did you start? When did I start? So this is my like I started working on nonprofits and similar projects in uh, middle school. 
So I started the Cities Foundation, which is an environmental protection NGO in Indonesia. I started in grade. I started a school project, but I saw that a lot of people were passionate about the issue. And that snowballed into an organization, and that snowballed into me connecting to a lot of, you know, just going to the ground, going to the village, meeting with them, talking to them, and seeing what problems exist in these communities, right? That really drove my passion, and especially I wanted to share their stories to you guys, the people who aren't there, right? So that's been my passion for the past five years, I think. That's why I started. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So, what are your you have a target which you tend to hopefully source, mm -hmm. but there's other components of that redact, the electronic submitters, everything else. What, what percentage of your system can be local? So um, we've been able to store everything on the power plant other than the actual generator, uh, inverter, and wire, and basically electronics. So that's about 80 percent of the material cost for a power plant. From um, from a two hour radius of just one spot. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Next. Yes. Sorry. The business idea is very simple, which is amazing because they're easy to execute. My concern is how do you protect your business ideas and prevent competitors from stealing them and executing to solve the competitive problem? All right. So the main. Okay, uh, so the first question um, is what makes us, what differentiates us, right? What makes us how are you protecting your ideas? How are you protecting your ideas? How are you protecting your ideas? So that's our network, right? So because our idea, the technology is only a portion of the application. So one of our advisors, Jim uh, Lee, uh, has run a nonprofit called Vega that's been implementing hydroelectric generators in rural Indonesia for the past 30 years. And their main philosophy is that within any hydroelectric project, especially in rural areas, 30% of the effort goes into the technical system, 70% goes to communication and social, uh, like understanding the social situation, right? So that's where we differentiate with other members. I, like, if you are in the technical system, like your does, sure, but do you have the social benefits, the best social benefits. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about our weakness. Um, how are you limiting biofilms and uh, growth algae, especially if you're fish farms? Is it something that can be taken apart, or are you making this plan? Yes, so the gravitational water works car plant was actually initially designed as a way very far about how, right? Um, so that's who it works. So in the way it is the way to design, the way to design design, that um, that minimizes the build-up. And also, yes, we are able to just take out the turbine, do very little on it. Instead, in fact, like we found with the outlier that um, like like we were recommending basically every two months to take out the turbine. And then wash it and then bury that, right? Yeah. Does that answer your question? Right. Yeah. Can I just ask about repeat revenue? I understand selling a device for a system once. How do you make additional revenue from that same customer on the right? Okay. So, here you go. Okay. So, uh, so this is projected for revenue from. The, uh, from one part and from one micro grid. So as you can see, the green one uh, represents for payments. It takes a piece of farmers two years to pay for the initial system. But uh, after that, we actually, uh, the, the, uh, the foundation, um, we have the, the value of the carbon credits from the energy being used, right, can be sold through our partner, uh, through our carbon credit partner, Common Digital, which is a carbon credit marketplace, in cooperation with including companies, right? So this is to offset their uh, vision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you.